Good morning, everybody. Uh, so, uh, In the United States, the middle of the night. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer to invite me to give uh, this lecture. So today I'm going to talk about advances in forensic science. I've been in forensic services about 64 years. I started my career in Taiwan as a police captain in 1965, come to United States, um, start working and joined the uh, University of New Haven. In 1976, I joined the state police as their chief forensic scientist. Uh, over the past 64 years, I did a lot of crime scene search, a lot of laboratory work, a lot of coron testifying. Um, a lot of people in the United States say I'm making possible become possible. Uh, I also co-author about 40 books and many uh, other accomplishments, uh, received many awards and uh, of course, uh, work with 47 country, investigate about 8,000 cases. Not too long ago, USA Today have, um, have a special issue of 25 headlines that shape the world history. 25 major cases uh, happen in the world during the past decade. Um, that they sent me a copy. We directly, indirectly participate 14 of those investigations from 9-11 to Iraq war, to uh, OJ Simpson trial, to uh, Clinton, Monica issue, uh, all those cases. In addition, I also work on Kennedy assassination reinvestigation, John Bernier Rainsey, um, rest of uh, other cases. We also participate, uh, investigate, uh, reconstruct many police shooting case. So during the past century, we uh, forensic scientists, we had made a great contribution to the world of uh, justice. In U.S., a lot of people say I touched the life from the poor to the president of the nation. And uh, they named me was one of the top forensic scientists. Um, what I see over those 64 years, there are tremendous advances in forensic science. In 1960, when I started my career in forensic science, in US, only 75 laboratories have a very limited service. Usually, uh, basic IDs such as fingerprint, shoe print, and uh, to drug analysis. Work on very low budget. Um, of course, not much of an instrumentation, uh, few public attention. By year 2020, there are 420 laboratory in the United States, which expanded the service from DNA to e-crime. The budget has increased tremendously, and um, many city, state, federal laboratory star uh, design the newest facility. I still remember in 1960, Connecticut State Laboratory, it's a very primitive uh, condition. By 2020, we have a uh, fascinating facility with excellent uh, scientists work in the laboratory. In addition, forensic application in justice system also changed tremendously. Early days, we basically work on criminal cases, but today, forensic evidence, besides criminal investigation, also used in civil dispute, public safety, environmental protection, national security, even historical importance. We open requests to do consumer protection, product safety, full water contamination, medical integrity, um, 
even the building road and the highway safety. In United States, we have about 18,000 police law enforcement uh, agencies, about 2,300 prosecutor's office, about 3,000 public defender's office, um, 2,400 medical examiner coroner's office. As I say, we have closed now to 420 laboratory. 88% are accredited, about 14,000 full-time employee. This chart shows a federal laboratory today have about 24 uh, FBI, ATF, post office all have a laboratory. Then we have a regional laboratory, 38. The major group falling into state laboratory, about 600, uh, 168. Some county, city have a laboratory or in addition, there are 38 private laboratory. So the model of forensic services in the United States predominated our government to laboratory or police crime lab. Then other, other uh, small group belongs to other category. Forensic service, of course, to facility today's well designed and uh, well equipped have a better qualification of system, uh, from disorganized to very organized uh, forensic service. Forensic education in the United States, in US, in 1960, only one PhD program, two master, two BS program, total five program. To 2020, now have 270 different university offer forensic educational program. Two reasons. One, because LEA, uh, this is a federal uh, system program for students to study forensic science or criminal investigation. Then by 1990, because the television uh, and uh, other publicity about CSI, so a lot of students feel interested in, to study forensic science. We see in forensic science field also have a lot of changes. When I start my career, forensic scientists were a generalist. In other words, we know everything a little bit from autopsy to entomology. But today, we become specialization. There are 38 separate uh, specialty basically falling into the four category. One is forensic medicine, such as the forensic pathology, odontology, and serology. Then we have other forensic specialty, such as you know, forensic nursing, forensic toxicology, forensic psychology. And uh, of course, uh, crime laboratory basically provide criminalistic services, such as fingerprint, imprint evidence, firearm, drug, in addition, now have a crime scene investigation, crime scene reconstruction. Besides that, also have a lot of other forensic specialty, about 67 of those. Uh, they are not really traditional forensic services. In forensic technology, of course, we have a lot of tremendous advance such as laboratory automation, biometric identification, trace evidence, uh, uh, tracing, e-crime technology, pattern evidence enhancement, uh, chemical evidence database. So we're going to cover some of those, of course, the DNA. The most advanced uh, area in forensic is te DNA technology. Uh, in 1995, Alex um, uh, introduced the DNA to forensic view. Now, through different generation, forensic science view, we already uh, apply not only the victim identification for mass disaster, uh, war crime, 
in addition for unknown body, um, also forensic evidence been using um, suspect identification. Many cases we start using investigative lead to provide services with the introduce of a new generation of DNA analysis. Uh, now we can do forensic genealogy that determine the race, eye color, hair color, racial origin, also familial DNA. A lot of cold cases in recent year has been solved through the analysis of the DNA. In um, testing of the DNA, of course, the equipment has improved tremendously with a rapid DNA, DNA sequencer, also extraction technique uh, being uh, advanced. So with a small quantity or uh, other DNA sample, now we can do a uh, number of analysis. Expansion of a DNA data bank also helping forensic uh, field. Now uh, there are a couple different software provide a vendor and a DNA testing kit. So make the DNA analysis much easier, much accurate. The formula DNA search basically uh, has to be a single source DNA. After no codas kit uh, hit, then we start looking at the uh, parental and family search, try to solve some cold cases, which is different than uh, forensic genealogy. Uh, forensic genealogy, basically we take the advantage of the DNA analysis, then we look at uh, social media and the DNA data bank besides the governmental DNA data bank, also look at a uh, genetic testing data bank and uh, with uh, all those commercial uh, company uh, testing so they can uh, look at uh, a lot of cold cases, uh, one after another was solved. The laboratory automation basically uh, with the uh, advanced instrumentation. So from the crime scene, the evidence collected to analyze and search the database, the ML information right away, we can provide to the investigator, provide the investigative lead. Database, of course, besides the fingerprint, of course, have a, a firearm. In addition to that, have uh, many uh, different uh, drug database, and uh, of course, biometric database. Fingerprint detection technique also have uh, tremendous advances with new chemical and the light source, uh, the combination. Um, with the FS moving to IFS and uh, to next generation identification, so make the fingerprint identification much easier and quicker. So the next plateau going to be the combination of a fingerprint DNA, a retina, and the rest of a biological, physical uh, database a combination. So in near future, this biometric database going to replace a lot of other database. ECRA, and electronic evidence technology also have tremendous advance. Uh, we'll friend the collection to the analysis. Many cyber crime laboratory has been established. Uh, many paper been published. With that combination of uh, reconstruction, now you can link uh, the electronic evidence to biological or other forensic evidence and start analyze to reconstruct uh, with artificial intelligence application, the crime analysis become a day, everyday um, uh, work already. So many uh, interesting case we've been working on through the Thailand analysis and uh, data 
analysis was able to link the suspect to the crime, especially the cell phone and GPS and computer analysis. So those are basically use the big data and information search uh, from CCTV video to sex crime file, sex criminal, fugitive file. So all the big data start link a in big search mining engine and uh, lead to the suspect. So future with uh, forensic scientists, uh, what we do besides analysis, this uh, big engine mining become very important um, uh, piece of work. Uh, maybe in the future with uh, the development robotic automation besides robot cop, robot lawyer, robot physicians may uh, have a mobile uh, robot crime scene investigator and forensic scientist. However, uh, forensic field, you cannot use a robot to replace because the, at the scene, each scene is different. First, we have to observe and then collect them analysis. After that, then we have to use creativity, try to reconstruct, which the robot cannot do that. But we have to accept the fact microelectronic and optical electronic monitor is going to uh, become the major um, foundation for law enforcement solve the case. Uh, Sometimes they may just skip the forensic work, uh, just monitor the license plate or facial reconstruction. Uh, so future, so this brand that link it the world, we have to also accept that. The logic with all those forensic investigation, basically laboratory analysis just become a part of it from the crime scene to the database to other uh, uh, electronic uh, uh, worm database. So uh, what we have to do is from the crime scene, we have to start do the crime scene analysis, not just the collect the evidence, the crime scene pattern uh, become extremely important which can provide crucial linkage. Another thing is early days, we collect the evidence from the scene to the lab. And future, the change going to lab to the scene. In other words, portable equipment, laboratory have to work with crime scene investigator together. We probably do real-time analysis analysis of some evidence at the scene. Instead of collect, package, then send to the laboratory. We can analyze the evidence at the scene. So with that uh, result, then we can provide uh, the services, the pattern evidence at the crime scene, not, uh, of course, the traditional uh, pattern evidence such as fingerprint, and bring, if we can find, recover a fingerprint, you can capture the image, search the database right away, instead of a pass have to lift and send the information, lifting information to the laboratory. Then uh, takes weeks uh, before you get the result, but with that pattern evidence at the scene, we can search right away. For example, a footprint, you can look at the database, determine the shoe wear, uh, the brand name, the size, and a possible manufacturer, fire mark evidence, handwriting, all those can be important, including the MO pattern. And the rest of all, of course, uh, GSR pattern, trajectory, all those has to work at the scene. So reconstruction work, we can start from the scene 
will find the blood pattern to fingerprint, to pollen particle, injury, post-mortem marking. We can try to reconstruct. But one thing we face uh, in the United States is tremendous pressure with the news media, defense attorney, public, and the judge. And uh, so forensic scientists now, we are squeezed between the science and law. Science, of course, we have to report the scientific fact. However, the law only the prosecution want to introduce some of the fact and defense want the other portion of the fact. Meanwhile, forensic scientists, we cannot really provide all the fact. We basically squeeze between the law and evidence. Many cases was reversed, many problems and issues we have to learn from the history. The traditional forensic identification nowadays in US, the many core are not accept. It's inadmissible. Uh, dental mark, that's a typical example. Handwriting and a year mark, lip appearing. Even some core, they challenge the fingerprint evidence, especially in year 2000, National Academy of Science made a white paper report and uh, criticized the forensic view. Subsequently, uh, the president's PCAS uh, made a report, uh, even consider the forensic scientists is not uh, meet the standard as a scientific view. So put forensic scientists in a very bad position and uh, many forensic laboratory was got into severe issue and problem. Then uh, uh, OSAC star putting together the standard. There are many studies. Actually in 1976, we already have a uh, national subcommittee uh, certification and guideline. And uh, that's an all picture here. Uh, that's me. Most of the people on uh, uh, this photo, they all passed away already. Um, few are still in the field. Them uh, American Crime Laboratory Directors uh, Association in 1985, we started accreditation program. That's one of the inspection uh, accreditation. This is another all photo and uh, I'm the only uh, person still uh, living. And uh, other four uh, colleagues, they all depart from uh, um, us one after another. Uh, so it's not really say for six scientists, we don't have guidelines. We don't have a certification accreditation. Uh, but anyway, Academy for Six Science, ESCLA, II, joined with uh, OSAC and uh, they're working on the guideline. But I don't think this guideline and uh, standard procedure will solve our problem because as a forensic scientist, we have anything associated to the suspect, we have to report. Anything dissociated the suspect, we also have to report. Any incorporated evidence, we have to examine. Any exploratory evidence, we should examine too. But unfortunately, uh, the core system would not allow to, or uh, uh, as a forensic scientist, uh, like Justice Purdue once say, if the law made you a witness, remain a man of science. You have no victim to avenge, no guilty part to ruin or save. You must bear the testimony with the limit of science. 
That's what we're supposed to do. But the standard of the lawyer, you have the same testimony, same identif uh, identical report. But if you are a prosecution witness, defense definitely say you're biased. But if you use the same testimony, same report uh, for defense, then uh, prosecution definitely call you a higher guy. So we're in a situation of no winning. They even in US have workshop for lawyers, how to discredit the truth for expert witnesses. Give an expert witnesses truthful, why you have to discredit them. So here, how to destroy cross exam uh, expert witness. So it's kind of a, uh, I guess, where because the forensic work, physical evidence now play a very important part in criminal and civil uh, litigation. Therefore, uh, they start attacking, for example, uh, Dr. Mollis uh, got Nobel Prize and developed a PCR procedure when he testified uh, he was attacked, uh, not for DNA, but for his personal life, for his past history. So fake news as, as another person, uh, another aspect forensic scientists we have to face today and the future. In 1950, uh, 60, the report um, always report the fact, let the reader make the own mind. By 70s, you report some of the fact, help the reader make their own mind. By 90s, report partial fact. And uh, by year 2000, the twist the fact, mislead the re reader. But today, of course, with web news, you really don't know their lie or falsify the story. Uh, it's put a tremendous pressure on the forensic scientists. So the future forensic science, we want to maintain the criminal justice system, have the confidence of the citizen, trust of the citizen. This is going to be a tremendous task for future forensic scientists. We have to have good standard scientific, but equally important, the legal field have to have standard, the procedure, technical, most importantly, ethical standard. Whatever we do, we should not lower our standard. Um, I want to thank you again. Uh, I want to share this. Uh, recently, I was uh, give a, a speech in the commencement in a law school and uh, 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 with the graduate, I uh, urge everybody, the future forensic scientists, have knowledge in your mind, have courage in your body, have honesty in your heart, uh, have friend in your life. I want to thank the organizer again. Uh, you are all my friend, and anything I can do, please let me know. Thank you.